Where can I? I'm going to discuss how you fill out um, 1701A in your annual ITR. Who will use um, 1701A? There are two groups who will be using 1701A, those who are availing of the optional standard deduction and those who are 8% um, in uh, the eight percent taxpayers. So basically, uh, you select um, the option to avail of the OSD at the first uh, at, by the first quarter of the year. So you indicate in your quarterly re return that you are availing of the optional standard deduction for the fiscal year. With regard to the 8% um, percentage income tax rate, so it's not a percentage tax, but it's uh, the 8% income tax rate. So this one, when you register as a taxpayer, whether as a professional or as a business person, it is selected in Form 1901. It is where you indicate that um, you are enrolling as an 8% taxpayer. So what is the benefit of being an 8% taxpayer? If you are a business person that um, probably do not have as many expenses to be deducted from your income, then the the choice of having having been taxed at eight percent on the gross income is more um, beneficial, and also with regard to optional standard deduction. For example, for professionals, you could only have so much expenses which can be deductible if you don't if you do not have um, employees or. Uh, basically, the expenses that you could deduct are those overhead expenses. And if you're not paying rent, then, you know, from your income, there would only be minimal expenses that, um, for example, would not reach 40%. So it is better that the total expenses to be deducted from your income is a flat rate of 40% without the need of um presenting receipts but however it doesn't um prevent the bureau from making assessments every now and then from from those um i've i've known who are using this these two methods i haven't encountered anyone especially for my clients who have been um, issued a letter of assessment so far. I hope they do not they do not become included in the list of regular oddities of the Bureau. So after the long intro, let's begin. For this... Sorry for the short interruption. That's my cat. So for this year, uh, it's the calendar year is 2021. And then um, in number two, you select no, because supposing that this is the first time that you submitted um, your income tax return. So you select no, this is not a short period. This is full calendar year, 12 month period. So um, for me, I'm a professional. If you're a business person, you select single proprietor. And then in number seven, you if, if you are an 8% taxpayer, you select um, 
the business income 8% or if you are a professional, you select I-1017. If you're a business person availing of the optional standard deduction, you select I-1012. Or if you're a professional using OSD, it's I-1014. For me, I'm... Um, suppose we, we use the example first for a business income under the 8% income tax rate. So I-1005. No, I've selected professionals, so I should select I will on those one seven. Date of birth, kumari lang, bata pa ako. Citizenship, uh, Japanese. No, Filipino. Foreign claim, foreign tax credits, no. If you don't earn income outside as a professional, um, and then the civil status, lagi natin married. If you are married and then your spouse's income is select yes. If the filing status is joint or separate, you just say separate. <laughs> it could also be joint, but for purposes of the additional exemption, this is no longer, um, this doesn't matter. What I encountered from my one of my clients in the province was that for for so long both spouses filed under the joint filing. <clears throat> However, uh, it happened to the to the other spouse, the husband. Um, he's he's had open cases with collection because um for the five years that they have um, filed jointly, the Bureau didn't update the annual income tax return of the other. So for purposes of compliance, I think it's better to file separately. <clears throat> um, for items 20 to 30, um, they're automatically populated. So you have to proceed with page two. In page two, I think I should enlarge my screen so that you see it bigger in when I shared this in YouTube. So I think I missed to select one, one part. So it says here, if, if you choose... I-1017, I-1017, this is automatically, um, this is automatically selected. You, I didn't choose the radio button in number 19. So in page two, we'll find, um, if you notice in 4A, number 36 to number 48, this, this field is grayed out because uh, we are not under the graduated income tax rates, which will avail of the optional standard deduction. So the field, if you're an 8% income tax um, payer, you fill out number, um, number 4B, items number 47. So for example, my income is 500,000. And then, wala naman akong discount na binibigay. So, and supposing I, I, I gave out a discount to my professional uh, fees of 25000 So, the net, net sales receipts or fees would be 475000 Now, before, um, the these number 53 here and number 56 they're not automatically populated before if i remember right so i have to input 
the 250,000, but the, if you can see now the number 38,000 is 20% uh, of, is it, wait, let me compute. So the, Um, the tax, the, oh no, it's 8% of the amount in, in, excess, uh, in excess of 250,000. So the amount in excess of 250,000 is 225,000. Let's check if how much. So, Two hundred twenty-five thousand times eight percent equals eighteen thousand. So here I should remove, and the amount is not um, auto-populated. I think the amount <laughs> the th thirty-eight thousand. Thirty-eight thousand is the eight percent of four hundred seventy-five thousand. Now, even if you were an eight percent taxpayer, the personal exemption of of two hundred fifty thousand will also apply to you, so that anything in excess of two hundred fifty thousand would now be taxable at eight percent from the net net sales or net receipts as the basis so that um, if I put here 250,000, which is the personal exemption, allowable reduction from gross receipts and other non-operating income, purely self-employed individuals and our professionals in the amount of 250,000. Remember that even if you're an employee, the 250,000 personal exemption is also applicable to you. So that now the tax due would only be 18,000. Um, for items 57 to 64, if you have tax credits from the previous fiscal year, you will have a tax credit um, when you paid uh, more, more taxes than what is due. What does that mean? So for example, last year, your tax due would only be 100,000, but you have paid 125,000. The 25,000 in excess of the tax due is a tax credit that you can apply in the next quarter or the next fiscal year if you have not exhausted it in the first few quarters of the following, following year. So for example, here you don't have any excess payment from the previous um, fiscal year, then your tax due would still be 18,000. So let's validate. Now it says successful. Then after that, after validating, you can submit your, <clears throat> your income tax return, and then it will return in your designated email the, um, the, res the, res the reply from EBIR forms that you will also have to keep. So now that you have tried one part, the 8% um, income tax payer, uh, I, will, I will just create a new video for, for OSD using this form. But um, for illustration purposes, I will illustrate when you have a tax credit from the previous year. Supposing here uh, you have a tax credit from the previous year <clears throat> of 2,500. And then when you're a professional, um, the professional fees given to you would be net of any um, withholding taxes by your client. So um, if you do not reach an income, a certain income level, I think now the threshold amount is 3 million. So the withholding amount is 5%. 
rolling tax amount is 5%. So, supposing I earned 500,000 with a discount of 25,000. So, 475,000. Um, I earned it over uh, in the whole year. I, I earned 300,000 in the first three quarters. So, 5% of 300,000, that's 15,000. And then, no, this is not tax payment. Sorry. So in the, for the creditable tax for the first three quarters, supposing the 300,000 was withheld with 5%, so that, that's, that makes it 15,000, 300,000, yeah. So now my tax due would only be 500,000, but in the, In the fourth quarter, um, I earned 175,000. So what's 5% 5 of 175,000? Let me check. 175,000, maybe it's, it's 750 times 0.05, yeah, 8,750. So that now my tax due of 18,000 had already been paid and I've paid excess, I've paid excess taxes amounting to 8,250. Now what will happen um, if you have paid income taxes in excess of what, uh, of what you have Um, of your net tax due, then this will be a tax credit to be applied in the next fiscal year or the next quarter. So that if I choose validate without, if I validate here in the tabs below without selecting anything here in number 30, um, it will turn an error message. So that, yes, please select an overpayment option and page one after item number 30. So don't select the first two radio buttons because it takes a lot of effort to recover from the BIR unless you're closing business or if you're a professional, you're not, <coughs> unless you retire, then you continue to be a taxpayer. So now I will select to be carried over as a tax credit for the next year or quarter. And then I validate again. Now it returned um, the message validation successful. And that means I can either edit or submit, modify my entries before I submit a final copy. I will not submit the final copy because this is, um, this is a live EBI form and this is my real, my real team. So I cannot. I cannot submit this. And so that's all for, I've illustrated here when you have a tax due and when you have a tax credit. So um, in another session, I will illustrate how you go about um, being an income taxpayer under the graduated rate with OSD as a mode of deduction of expenses. Uh, just a reminder that earlier I selected um, I-1017 because I am a professional, but if you're a business person, you have to select I-1015. And then number seven is linked to number uh, 19 so that when you select, no, so, sorry. Number number six, seven, nine, nineteen are linked together. So that if you select a single proprietor here in number six, the choices for the radio button that you can select is only between I one o one two and I one o one four. So either you're a a business person under the OSD or a business person under the eight percent 
tax income tax rate and supposing that you're a professional then your choices would only be here in I-1014 and I-1017. I think I mentioned wrongly earlier. It should be I-1012 and I-1015 for the business person. So there you go. I hope this has helped you. I'm giving this free um, tutorial for how you, in, in how you fill out the annual income tax returns. <coughs> because I've had people coming to me to fill out their annual ITR and giving me money for that. You know, I mean, I love the money, but um, I love the money, but you know, this this is really a very simple task that would not need the the help of an accountant. You can do it. You can DIY. So that, you know, knowledge is free. And if you search for it, you know, you save, you save bucks. But for me, the accountant who will do the annual ITR, those who would not want to deal with this, I'm fine. I, I've helped you either way. Okay.